Hi everybody, last harness racing meeting of this crazy season. Craig Thompson, imagine if people had told us way back on August the 1st, what this season was going to look like. Crazy, isn't it, Michael? Good morning to you. What's changed in the, in the space of six months, hasn't it? We've been out with COVID, we've been back, things have changed and different dimensions uh, in the racing game with publications and form and uh, track side. But hey mate, we're kicking and we're running at the moment. I really enjoyed last week's uh, night at Eddington where the good horses were back. We saw self-assured back in a small but select field. And gee, Michael, he had to be pretty good to win last week because I wasn't convinced he'd be screwed down, but it shows you class can take you an awful long way. I think the drive won it. I think if Mark Putin had sat back for another 400 metres, he might have got beat self-assured. So it was actually nice to see some initiative from Mark and go forward and rest control of the race. He drove it like he was driving for the punters, not that he was driving for the horse or himself. I thought it was a really good drive from Mark. He's yeah. back tomorrow. So first race there is at 5.26, by the way, but tonight I should say, 5.26 um, at Addington. There's 10 races there. Does he just win again self-assured? Is it a case where if he paces away and does everything right, he should actually be even more dominant this week, Craig, because I think the market will frame up that way. Oh, I think so, Michael, because I, I, I don't know how you could tip against him. I mean, I, I had reservations last week talking to you about where he was and the trials that he had. Also, his standing start manners hadn't been great leading into that, but hey, he stepped away. He had to be the best horse to win that race. Um, I thought if you're, if you're looking at the opposition, I mean, Classy Brigade couldn't have been driven any better by Blair to no. win it, to win that race, and it, it wasn't good enough. So it was very hard to make a case for the horses that had finished in behind Self-Assured to turn the tables this week. It, it, it is unless it is he ends up being further back and maybe, you know, one of the stable mates, like another masterpiece was pretty good last week, rolled to the front. But I agree with you. It's really hard to bet against him. I think the market will be a lot tighter around him. The other returning horse, um, who we haven't seen for an awfully long time, is in race six, Sunday Sun, who this time last year, Craig, was just a weapon. He was just awesome. Have, have you seen much of him at the workouts, and how has he been trotting? Because as we know, the best version of him is very, very good. But he's an awfully hard horse to catch if there's any little doubts or physicalities in his mind. Really happy with him, Michael, to answer your question. I, I've watched his last two trials. Now, he's had a couple of trials in a workout, and every one of them suggests to me that he's come back a little bit like when he was at the Jewels. He was just dominant, and he's been, been driven a little bit conservatively by John. He's tended to wait for horses to move in the trial, uh, then get round, do a bit of work, and still out finish his stable mates like Prez the Bell in consecutive weeks, and, and running really good sections. Like, like they're walking around and running a quick quarter. He's run some pretty good times at the trials, Michael. So I thought he's come back very well. He is going to have to be at his best to beat Majestic Man, because he's obviously had a couple of runs, and he's fit, and he's got 10 metres on this week. But, gee, I tell you what, I've been very impressed with Sunday Sun. I don't think there's any kinks in his armour at the moment. Okay. So for the punters? Does he beat Majestic Man or Majestic Man who's fit and won pretty well last time out and from an informed stable? Does he just roll to the front and therefore Sunday Sun can't catch him? Well, I think if um, Majestic Man gets in front of Sunday Sun, and that, that's every possibility he will do that this week, Michael. I will tip Majestic Man to beat Sunday Sun, but mm, well, there's not a lot in it. And it depends, again, on what price you're going to get. But as I said... Um, I'm certainly thinking the Hanshaw Calm had his chance last week uh, to defeat um, Cracker Hill, and Cracker Hill was great. So I can't see him uh, defeating the two back markers. Okay. What about Krug in race four? Is he just going to turn up and win? Yeah. Okay. Now, what about race three is a really interesting race. It's not very often a two-year-old trot is a standout race. Occasionally, okay, the jewels is not a fair race. This is a great field. I know it's the last meeting of the season, so they're almost three, but real depth from real trotting stables right across this field. What did you make of that when you work out the trials form, who's fit, who's not fit, and of course the fact that the hopes have at least as good an armoury as the All-Stars? Well, that's right. I mean, you've got three or four from each stable, haven't you, Michael? So they're kind of um, tied in well with each other. And the bottom five, I mean, they've all been in great form. Um, obviously, time... Up the hill was good winning last week, but there was a couple in behind that certainly put their hand up. Michael, I, I, I thought the last horse in the book is a horse that I'd spec if there was a decent price about regular tyre. 
I think Natalie's down to drive this one. It's only at the one start. It wasn't in that race last week where time up the hill won, so it's coming into it on the fresh side. Hayden Cullen drove it at the trials the other day. I thought it trolled up quite nicely. So, again, uh, it's a race where there's three or four chances in the race. A little regular tyre each way if you're getting a nice price. A lot of really big names racing tonight was spoken about. Um, horses people will know. What else have you found away from then, Craig? Is there anything in the support races you like for the last meeting of the season? Well, I think the All-Stars will dominate a lot of the races, Michael. And they've got a couple in the last, and they should dominate the last. Um, Italian lads look very good. But I tell you what, there's one in there that if it just got the right run, maybe able to get over the top of them, called Cardinal Sin, uh, trained by Crandell Giddy. And Blair Orange is going to take the drive. I watched this trial last week, and gee, I was mightily impressed with this run. Um, it's a three-year-old by Betis Delight. It trialed at uh, Rangiora, Michael. You know Betis Hart, how good she is. I mean, she's a, a very, very good near open-class mare that was good enough to go to Australia. Well, what, Cardinal, she started in Miracle Mile. Yeah, well, she came off uh, Betis Hart's back and run past her in the run home and did it very, very convincingly. Are you giving now, a chance of beating Italian lad? Because Italian lad... Look really good last time, and I thought it back was Santa Led Italian lab would just suck him behind it. So, you think you can beat Well, I, I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking Italian lad's going to start at dollar fifty, dollar sixty, where Cardinal Sin may start close to eight dollars because he got money for Aquasanta, you got money for Konasi. There's also the school of thought that maybe Aquasanta can get crossed at the start. Yeah, Yep. Connie said got very quick off the gate the other day. So, hey, I'm I'm, I'm throwing one out there at a little bit of value, Michael. I think Italian lad is probably the best horse in the race, but Cardinalson is trialling very well and you will get a nice price. Uh, Craig, also a bit of good news coming out from Harness Race in New Zealand this week. They're actually going to have a Horse of the Year awards. They were sort of lukewarm on Horse of the Year because obviously a lot of the good races weren't run, but they've decided they're going to have something in early September. I think it's a good idea. I think I know it's a truncated season, but I still think, for example, mm. Winterfell will win Trotter of the Year. I'm sure of that. I still think yeah. it's important they get that on it. Well, I think it's also good for the, the the drivers, like the junior drivers that have just gone around at the moment. They can get recognition for what they've achieved this season and, and for a few other things. So, well done on them for holding that awards. As you said, it's been a truncated season. They've had a few hiccups, but um, it's going to go ahead and that's all good. Yeah, well, they were going to have the drivers awards, but no horse awards because they lost all those group ones and the jewels and that sort of stuff. But they've decided now they have a full awards night, just in a more relaxed format. So we'll keep people updated on Big Fish, Little Fish, how they can attend that. But Craig, last race meeting of the season, if you were going to have one Big Fish bet tonight, even small money, don't matter too much, what would you back? I'd back Cardinalson for a place, Michael, in the last race because I think you'll get more from it for a place than you get for Italian land to win. Thank you, Big Fish. We'll be back for the new season on, it's only two days away, on Sunday to preview Eddington then.